Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer, and I am not an accomplished solo dancer. So I am very thrilled that you have broke with us, Dave. Um, Hello. <laughs> this and that. And today we are thrilled to welcome Brooke Tufts as we look forward to Solo Dance Nationals, which has had a really weird part in the season because in the ice dance world, um, our coaches, Kristen and Igor, are basically just always peaking year round. So someone is always competing at the height of their season, yes. which means that they um, probably are burnt out like six months ago um, and are constantly, uh, you know, getting the people in gear. So Brooke, how are you right now? Where are you in training as you look forward to Solo Dance Nationals? Um, everything's been really good. You know, we're at the height of the training aspect of it. Um, we are... I leave a week from Wednesday. So we are at the final grind, getting ready and everything, getting that cardio up. Otherwise, nothing's being changed, you know? It's just doing it and doing it and doing it over and over again. It's a home so stretch. Brooke, as an outsider, sorry to interrupt, can you sort of talk us through, because it does confuse me a little bit, like sort of the trajectory of your particular season compared to that that we're following sort of of like the junior and senior Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. and like that. So obviously, you know, the Grand Prix season just started. They go until, you know, for the U.S. juniors, usually until like January, but just because of nationals, seniors are going to go all the way till March with worlds and everything. Um, for me, I started back in March. Mm. So my solo season for me goes from March to September. Some people start a little bit later in the season, but that's the general time frame for it. So we kind of overlap a little bit where the international season starts, we end. And then hopefully, you know, as solo grows and starts going international, our season, you know, I might start a little bit later, but I'm going to go all the way till the international season's done. Mm, okay. So let's talk about where you are because you recently, uh, you know, you got sick and you told me, well, it's August. So every August you have some sort of a drama. Last year yes. you had lace bite. And I remember Kristen saying about you to me when we were practicing, She, I told her to get a shot in her head, get a shot in her butt, get a shot wherever she wants. She needs to get on that ice and run that program. Yeah. In a week. <laughs> okay. So last year with the lace, it's, there's always something in August for me. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, it's like my life, like this, literally the sky falls, like everything crashes. And like, we all know this, like last year, um, we went to a competition in California, our rental car got like broken into fully, you know, window got smashed in, our stuff got stolen, not all of it, but some of it. Like a computer and, and then, skates and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. Ryland skates got stolen. It was a whole thing. They, they just took bags. You know, they didn't know they were selling ice skates. My skates were sitting right there on the chair. Um, they could have taken them if they wanted to, but they didn't. Thank God. And then um, I, the day I got home from California, the next morning, I was on my way to the rink and I got into a car accident, totaled my car. I was fine. Oh, um, like literally the sky falls this year. I ended up with bronchitis. <laughs> so how like every August, something happens to me. You were it's also like training falls. like really, really well. Uh, I would say March, April. And then there was a knee situation going on. Yes. I got patella tendonitis. Yes. There's always something with me. And, and at one point you were still going to go to this competition and, yes. and, and your, your chief competitor got a record breaking score, which he did post, including he posted his reaction to the score as well so that you could see it. <laughs> um, he likes to post the podium shot of himself in first place quite often, um, which people do show you at the rink, I think every day. <laughs> um, and uh, I, you know, we like to have fun with Brooke and uh, people are on top of you. Yeah. With this. Yes. So I was wondering with, you know, last year, uh, Igor and Kristen sat me down and they were like, you need to make people aware of solo dance and make mm -hmm. sure that people understand. So I started sharing videos. People started, they, re they leave the same comments every time. What is this? There's no jumps. Oh my God, I love this. Why isn't this internet? I mean, it's the same comments every time a video is posted. Right. Um, right. But now people know who you are. So like, how has that changed for you? Um, I mean, it's definitely been a whirlwind of things, you know, it's, I think it's amazing the way that it's all developed. Um, I think solo dance needed that recognition 
you know, as we all see, nobody really knows what it is. And everybody's always really confused by it when they first Look, see this it. This isn't about solo dance. This is about people being invested in your competitive rivalry with Lucas. <laughs> people are really intense about this. And what is it like now that everyone is on you about it? Um, Give me the kumbaya like, about solo dance. Like, I, I, okay. it's got to be an ambassador. She's doing her ambassadress moment where she's making sure people know what it is. Because <laughs> to know it seems to be to love it. And you're right. Like, each time we post it, everyone is like, what is this dot, dot, dot? Right. I love it. Yeah. I'm very glad that I was able to bring it around the world and for other people to see it. I always said when I was younger, and this sounds cocky, like I always wanted to make a name for myself. That was like my biggest goal in life. No matter what it was in, I wanted to make a name for myself. And I feel like that was achieved. Um, and we're still going for more, you know, like once that name was made in the solo dance world, I constantly wanted to keep doing more. Mm -hmm. You know, I never wanted to just stop and end it and be like, okay, I did it. Like, no, there's still more to do. Also, the Montclair Arena is like really split within two camps, which anyone who trains there will tell you. Like there mm -hmm. is the Krigor camp and there is the Team Israel camp. And like yes. you're the only person that really like navigates and talks to everyone on both sides. Like otherwise there is like an unspoken divide between these. You two. have to be happy with everybody you train with. Otherwise you're going to make it worse for yourself. Right, but you're the only one who really like <laughs> I think because I'm the oldest and mm -hmm. I am closer to age than everybody else and being the I saw Alexei Bychenko doing your moves the other oh, day yeah. we all do them yes we <laughs> all do that move that's everybody's favorite move listen since I was like a juvenile I've always had a move there's always been a move for me when I was still in freestyle and juvenile and intermediate I skated to boogie boogie bugle boy and anybody in that time era can tell you like that was my most iconic program and I went like this you know, and I did all the moves and everybody knew them and everybody did them. <laughs> well, you know, where are we at this point? Because, you know, you have won in these matchups against Lucas. You won the rhythm dance twice, Brooke, and the free dance has not been the strength, which is odd because at the beginning of the season, the free dance was going super, super well in training. Mm -hmm. for you. So how are you feeling about both programs right now? My short, I love. I love, I'm confident in it. I have no problems with my short at all. I love skating that program so much. And knowing that it was also Kristen and Igor's Olympic music means a little something to me. Um, yeah, roll your eyes all you want, Dave. <laughs> um, the free dance is an amazing program and I love it. I love skating that free dance. Unfortunately, I've just made some stupid little mistakes in it. You know, at a point in the season, I want to say it was... When I was in Virginia at Edward G. Pickin, we realized like that program cannot go a day without a run through. Mm. So then, you know, we went to the next competition and I was on my practice ice. It was not an official practice ice, no music. And I did a full run through with no music. You know, that's the way I have to train that program for my body. It has to be done like that. And it definitely progressed and it got so much better once we started training it like that. You know, there are no days off with that program. So I was concerned about it when you made the program, but I did make that known. It's like, a hard program. It's <laughs> very hard, Brooke. I was concerned about this when you it were. It is a difficult program. Like, listen, Jason Brown's was amazing. No doubt in my mind. I watch it every night. You know, I always have my things. I have to watch things before I compete. I watch it the night before I compete. It's It's ritual. I have to. But I have to say, mine might be just a little bit harder. <laughs> I believe you. His starts with the slow music, right? So his mu his starts with the music that explain this music. to me. Uh, Glenn Cora, who's also a musician, that his starts with the music of the sun coming up. Yes. And yours, like the sun is up the whole time. Like the there sun is, is of up. Me. Yes. It's <laughs> um, you know what? Because Dave like loves to call me a Jersey girl. It's like we started the party and then it was like, okay, we need a quick little nap. Okay, we're back. We need to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever called you. Like, no, I said that you're- Are la you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> you called me a Jersey girl. Listen, I'm not saying I'm not, but- <laughs> <laughs> I said that your rhythm dance is the most New Jersey thing I've ever seen in my life. Okay, and that's a fact. Okay, that's just- 
That's Listen, fine. It's Jersey Latin. <laughs> Jersey Latin, yes. <clears throat> what I'm really intrigued by is especially in the rhythm dance, in the fact that one of your chief sort of competitors is a male skater, uh, sort of like the nuances of the ins and outs of sort of how that rhythm dance situation with two different genders competing under the same discipline, what, what that's like. Do you try to maximize certain things? Is he trying to maximize certain things? Do you, do you hope at one point it splits? Do you like that it's combined? I think that for many of us on the outside is the most fascinating part of this discipline. It's different. It's definitely different. Yeah. Um, you know, the one thing that's great about it is, yes, technically, I can twizzle just as good as him. He can twizzle just as good as me. We can do We can do footwork just as good as each other. We can do everything just as good as each other. I mean, it really does just become a judge's competition on what they want to see more of and who one judge might like more than the other. And that's figure skating. That's the way the sport works. It is, we can technically have the same levels on everything, but it's up to the judges at that point. Who knows what your panel's going to say? Who's going to like more than the other? You know, it's figure skating. So do I want to see it split? No. Okay. I think it's different. And I think it brings more of an attraction to the sport. You know, especially in this day and age, like people love that. And it's awesome, you know, that we are able to do that. We don't have to worry about quads and all that stuff, you know, and lifts and whatnot. We don't have to stress out about that stuff and be like, well, that person's obviously going to do it better. Hmm. Um, it just come, it comes down to the judges. So last year he had to do the female, Lucas, you know, any of the guys that were in solo dance had to do the female steps of the patterns that everyone was doing. And yeah, Alex, that's, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Right. And we had a lot of fun with this. Like I would remind Brooke, I would say, don't let him be more woman than you in the rhythm yes. dance. Whatever that means. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> he would, yes, Dave would say that to me sometimes, but. And they do, they do make it equal when it comes to that. You know, I would have loved to, so when I did the season before, when I did burlesque, it was Broadway season for us. And we had to do the fin step. Um, he had a partner at the time. So he was not at solo nationals and he was also um, in junior. So he would have been a level below me, but I really would have been interested to see what would have happened with fin step because it's such a difficult dance and the women's steps are so difficult. Um, and it was different than partnered. Partnered had half of the pattern and then the partial step. We had to do the whole pattern and we had to, obviously we all did the women's steps, but like, would they have made the guys do the guy steps? Like, I don't know what they would have done with that. But do you feel night, that you were better at the fin step than him? Cause that's what I'm getting by your response when you said- He never was, did fin step, so I don't know. Right, but like he's really tall with long limbs and you're wanting to him do something quick tempo. So like, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down, Brooke. Okay, and like- Who knows what would have happened? <laughs> it's okay, Brooke, the people are into this competition, but listen, <laughs> he trains like Evan Lysacek, okay? His coach says it. My uh, mom said the funniest comment, which I think you would have loved. She thinks that we are like Johnny Weir and Evan Lysenchak. <laughs> yes. Ah, fascinating. Okay. <laughs> yes. And, and that is like a back and forth. Who knows what's going to happen? But what I like is that if he posts anything, every dancer in the rink will like say something to Brooke about it. Like <laughs> they are on top. They are studying each other's Instagrams. Like this is a really fun. And listen, I'm sure whenever I post something, they're doing the same thing. It's figure skating. Yes. Yeah. But it has to engage the discipline in a different way when there's already a rivalry and sort of like a new discipline, new to us anyway. Correct. Um, this sort of discipline, it does make it more interesting to follow than. Although yeah. it might be nice for you if you were just dominating the whole thing without any sort of... Of uh, course. Event. And listen, uh, when we weren't competing against each other yet, you know, that's the way it was. Like, if he was competing, he was winning everything. And when I was competing, I was winning everything, you know? So putting us together, it makes it more interesting to watch. Who knows what's going to happen? We, we like to watch it, you know, from afar. When It uh, always makes it fun. <laughs> uh we are on the game uh Having so where is the, where is nationals being held brooke um they're being held in illinois um i believe it's in glenview illinois okay. put me on that okay. something like that it's a brand new rank i've never been there i've never been to chicago illinois i've never been so 
another state to add to the list. And, and what's your sort of experience with like the crowds that this event draws, like at a nationals like this? Is it a modest crowd? Is it primarily people on the inn or? Um, primarily people on the inn, you know, whoever's there. Um, okay. I would say senior has definitely started to draw more of a crowd when Lucas and I are there. Um, more people want to see what's going to happen. Um, they want to see that rivalness and, you know, and it's funny because we will, you know, in Lake Placid, we were together. There's plenty of spots to warm up in Lake Placid, but we would always end up next to each other warming up. Um, and it's kind of funny, you know, like we don't, we'll talk to each other before we compete. But like the day that we're competing and when you're in Lake Placid, you see everybody everywhere. Like the day that we're competing, if we like cross paths with each other, there was like no communication. It was, mm. you know, headphones are in. We we're just walking right past each other or we'd end up warming next to each other. Um, you know, there was always like a little, little something there, but it makes good competition. Oh, of course. We're, in, we're picking it up, but you may not be my favorite solo dancer because in senior, because now Drake is competing, who kind of has a weird blend of Elvis Stoico and an ice dancer at the same time. <laughs> And I don't I'm understand just, where those two things meet. Yeah. <laughs> I am so into this. This boy likes to perform. And, you know, Brooke, he may be winning favor with me. Listen, I understand. Drake's a character. Yes. And I like a character. Yeah, Drake is awesome. Ring, you know. Drake is awesome. Drake is, like, the most chill, laid back, like, loves basketball and everything. Like, if you, if I were to meet Drake off the ice and had no idea that he was a figure skater, I would have no idea that he's a figure skater. How did he fall into skating? His, um, I believe he also has an older brother. His older sibling skated. His sister skated. And I believe I'm correct in saying he has an older brother. His older brother also skated. Because, you know, I just met Drake. You know, he came into our purview. He was doing a Michael Jackson program. I think it was Smooth Criminal. And yes, with Jocelyn. <laughs> yes. And then this season, he's doing, you know, Chicago. They're doing, like, the Velma and Roxy. Uh, oh, yeah. At the Drake. end, together. Yes. He loves it. Okay. Loves and now it. Drake is Fingers such a in the hair, her. choreography, like, all the stuff. Yeah. He got a haircut. I know I'm upset about it. I asked Drake if he was familiar with Samson and Delilah and thought that this was a good idea to get a haircut right before the competition. He didn't get it, but you know, I did try to educate him. So. Oh, my Kriegor kids. No, I love Drake. He is so we funny. We love Drake. We love Drake. I love all the we kids. We like the Kriegor Drake. kids, some more than others, but we like them, you know. Now, Brooke, do you feel like you sass Dave as much in his training as he seems to towards you? Mm, I'm a little bit nicer to him. I wondered uh, about that. I had a feeling that might be the case. Okay. He might say otherwise, but I'm definitely nice to him. Okay. okay. I would I, say everyone is pretty intense on the ice in the mornings when we train. Yeah. Like, it's a pretty serious atmosphere. I think that everyone talks when we're putting the skates on and that's where we joke around, but yes. it's not really like, I mean, like so occasionally. When we're on the ice, I'm very good. And I think I got this from Ice House. I'm very good at figuring out where people are going so that I don't get killed. Like little mm. baby Brooke at Ice House was just trying to make sure she didn't get killed. Now I'm like, mm, there's a child there. Bet you they're going to go that way. So I'm going to go this way. And 99% mm. of the time I'm right. So like when Dave's skating, like I figure out his patterns and stuff. And I'm like, mm, I'm going to try not to kill Dave today. <laughs> We don't have problems like that. Yeah. I'm like, I really don't want Dave on my bad side, so I'm going to try not to kill Dave. <laughs> <laughs> like, I might get close, but I'm not We gonna skate run. with this one skater who, very nice person, has a knack of going, like, where you're going to be, like, a magnet. And, <laughs> yes. like, camping out and getting, like, nervous there. It's just, like, it just happens. It's just, yeah. Um, Drake is one of those people. Oh, I wasn't talking about Drake, but okay, yeah. No, no, no. Drake is one of those people. Um, We have two of them, Drake and Topsy. And we make fun of them for it all the time. And they know it's true. Like, they don't intentionally do it. They just somehow always manage and find a way to run into somebody. And they're they're the first people to turn around and be like, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Like I didn't mean to. I didn't see you. Like sometimes I genuinely just think they're blind. 
No, we skated with one girl who would know that she was going to get in your way and she would do it anyway. Only child from a different state. Like, mm. like had this look in her eye, I'm going to get in your way on purpose. Right, like I'm going to do it. Mm, that that's Ice House. It was a former Ice House skater. That is correct. Yes, mm. that's, that is the vibe of the Ice House. Yes. Yeah, I'm that's... always reminded of that Scott Moyer comment about Papadakis and Cicerone, remember? When he was like, oh, they keep running into us. And he was like, well, yeah, that happened to me at my first competition too. Or whatever that like- so There's an Ice House thing where like you don't move for someone else, they move for you and it's like hierarchical. Yeah. Kalina was big on that. She was like, well, you just don't move for them and they will learn. And I'm like, I'm not gonna skate in a kit. Could you imagine, right? Like you're skate a grown man, like skating into a child, like, come on, okay? Like, like somebody's gonna say something about that. Yeah, th th that's, that's not appropriate. You know, yeah. like this is, yeah. No, so, Kalina would say something like that. She would, you know, and this is, that's what makes her great. You know, that you know what, Nina, my really good friend, Kim, which who Dave knows, um nina told her one day like you just have to run them over and kim was like okay haha ha, funny and nina was like no i'm serious like they're not gonna learn unless you run them over <laughs> i always say that like training at the ice house was like your rocky period before he takes on the russian like that like gritty it is the stairs yes like, the, the music is playing it's dark in there. Yeah. There's screaming coaches, crying children. Like yeah. it's it's a vibe, you know. Brent Gibson are doing twizzles to that music. Yeah, it's all sure. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you a fan of the Rocky program book? You're gonna hate me. I haven't seen it yet. Oh no, that's not why we would take issue. <laughs> 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 you loved it and thought it was inspirational. Person. Then I would be like, oh, okay. <laughs> I have not watched it yet. Which coach is taking you to solo nationals? Or are they both taking you? Miss Kristen is coming. Okay, because last year when you got off the ice, it was one of the great um, kiss and cry reactions. It really is always a gem when Kristen puts people on. I have to say, I like Kristen putting me on because she's so like blunt, but I think I freaked, I freak her out with like how quiet I get before I compete. Yeah. Everyone out, right? Me and Kristen's conversations before I compete are my favorite things ever. <laughs> They are quite funny, and especially when yeah, she's Edward's not a there. person that expresses joy very easily or often. You know, she's what you would call um, reserved into her emotions. <laughs> <laughs> to me, at least with the kids, she knows exactly who needs what mm. before they get on. She knows how to, if this one likes to be talked to, if this one likes to stay quiet, if that one wants to be by themselves, if that one wants you with them, like she knows exactly what we all need. And what do you need? I need to be talked to. I need to be distracted. And I don't need yeah. to talk about figure skating. Right. Like me and Kristen, the year, oh, this was great. I was like, especially once I turned 18, me and Kristen's relationship grew up a little bit, you know, cause legal adults. So things were more comfortable. Um, we were in Lake Placid last year, so my Beyonce season, and the hockey camp was going on at the same time. I'm standing on the ice, just kind of skating around a little bit. I'm just waiting. And um, we <laughs> start having, like, just a regular casual conversation about whatever. Then this, like, group of hockey guys start coming out. And Kristen turns around because, like, they're being a little noisy, looks at me and was like, well... Now you can give them a show. <laughs> it's just like stupid, like girl stuff like that we'll talk about. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, it clears my mind. It's distracting. But one great thing, and I thank God for this, is the second the music starts, I'm in another world. I don't know where I am, but I'm in another world. And I it takes over. My mind could be racing right before the music starts. And it's like, Nothing's there besides me, music, and a crowd. Well, I like when you got off the ice last year at Nationals for your free dance that I think Oof. you were disappointed. The two of you didn't even speak, but it was like a study in body language and sighing and like head against the wall energy. It was, it needed yeah. more cameras to like pick up exactly what was going on. It was, obviously last year wasn't exactly how we wanted it to go with my foot and everything. We knew I wasn't as prepared as I could have been. But 
considering the circumstances, I was as prepared as I could have been. Um, so, you know, I got off the ice from my free dance and the worst part was we didn't think I got close enough to the wall for my choreo step element. And if I didn't start close enough to the wall, that element is dashes. So at first we didn't think I started close enough. Obviously they measured it and we were fine. But I looked at her when I got off the ice and I knew exactly what she was thinking of. And I got off and I, I didn't say a word to her. She didn't say a word to me. We were just like, we, we knew what was happening and we didn't need to say anything to each other in that moment. <laughs> Well, it kind of blows my mind in watching these competitions where like the minute uh, a skater is finished and whatever the discipline, but especially in your discipline, I would think it's such this performative and you are so spent, you just left mm -hmm. it all out there. The idea to now like put on an analytical hat and sort of like shift gears out of performance mode into analysis mode yeah. seems so jarring to me. Like, and you can see some of the the skaters that have given their all in this program, and let's say there were was a mistake or whatever it was, then the coach starts like teaching or analyzing. And I was like, if I were the skater, I would not be open to any of that kind of communication at that. I maybe it's, we'll talk about it in a half an hour even, but like right. the second after, it seems so jarring as a viewer. It is such a, like, it's a light switch. Mm. It's on and off. You know, the second I, I finished, when I finished my free dance in Lake Placid, when I fell in my choreo step, I finished, I was in my choreo slide and my choreo spin completely went over my head that I fell pretty much. Like, didn't even think about it. Didn't register it, anything. I finished the program and I was like, oh my God, I fell. <laughs> like, there was no registration of it, like. The music's still on. The program's still going. You still have to finish it with as much energy as you can, with as much expression as you can. You can't, like, if somebody were to walk in after you fell, they shouldn't be able to tell that there was a mistake in the program because you can see it on their face. Right. You know, so the second the program's done, you register it. But you still have to keep a smile on. You still have your bow to do. You still have to get off the ice with a smile on your face no matter what happened. You know, you get off the ice and then it's, you're right, it's instant. It's just, it's a light switch. Yeah. It's that quick when it all comes in. As a skater, though, when you're in it, you're in it. You yeah. can't. I think Kristen's direct when you're like, she's honest, but she's not, it's not like when you finish a program for Galena, okay? Like, this is not the same thing. Do you remember what that was like, like practicing and doing your program? Even oh, in don't even get me started. <laughs> the worst thing you will ever hear is not bad. Okay, that is... The no, are you kidding me? That best, was the best thing. Yeah, I mean, that's hard. That's the best thing you will ever hear. <laughs> not bad. Not that was bad. The best. I and I was young when I was with the Petrenkos and Galena. I started with them when I was five mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. So I was with them for really the developing parts of my skating, and I was with them till I was eleven. Um, they were um they were amazing. They were great coaches. They taught me a lot. I would not have gotten where I got at that age without them but they could be scary. <laughs> just sit in my car afterwards and be like, what just happened? <laughs> it's another world. It is another world when you're there. It is like, people go in and like, people tell me stories and they think I'm going to be shocked. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> is there more? Totally no? for the oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, I expected that to keep going. I expected more. No, no, okay, that seems normal. And people are like, that's not normal. And I'm like, well, you don't understand where you are yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a Tuesday at the Ice House. That is a just, Tuesday. Um, it yeah. was a casual afternoon. Did you train with Annabelle when she did singles before she did Ice Dance? I competed against Annabelle when she did singles. Were you against her when she did the Jessica Rabbit? Pro a very age appropriate. When and I was Nikolai doing... Morozov gave his tween age daughter why don't you do me right? Which is really just what we expect she's, from um, She's two years older than me, right? So she was doing that program when she was 11. It was Boston Nationals 2014 that she did it. I got she a text the from season someone. Four oh, no, no, no. It was that season because Lake Placid had regionals mm -hmm. and I was there. And it was my first time making the final round in juvenile. I was so proud of myself. 
and I skated to Don Quixote hmm. with Nina. Yep. And I had a cute little like pink dress with the black puffy sleeves. Oh yeah. I competed against Annabelle that I've known Annabelle forever. Are you following her now? Like in Um, I mean, yes and no. If I know she's competing, I'll absolutely watch her. I mean, she's a beautiful ice dancer. I mean, she's um, dancing at Cardi B next year, which is the kind of energy we need from you on the ice. Yes. Last year she skated to Cardi B. Oh. Oh, you're right, she did. I blanked there for yeah. a second. Kim and I yeah, were paying not, attention to this. It wasn't originally a Cardi B song. Right. But like, you need to keep up with this. We're trying to get Brooke to make better choices for her music next season. And like, she now has like people that are on top of her. People are talking about this, Brooke. I had a whole, I had like two big discussions about you while I was in Maryland. People yeah, want about that. to talk to me about you and solo dance and <laughs> your programs and this competition and people are into it. So we have ideas. Dave doesn't like my freelance ideas. I loved my original 80s idea, but technically it's not actually 80s. So I'm not allowed to do it. Mm. So we, and before we wrap up, the, the solo dance season, it was supposed to happen earlier. Now it's supposed to match. Is there any update with the solo dance and, and what is going on? Um, for international? Yeah. So the rules were supposed to come out on September 1st. Obviously, they've been slightly delayed. They did not come out. Um, nothing can happen until that that rule book is out. What is Once our good friend Sean that... Redstat not doing? I mean, he has been to the Montclair rink, and why? Sean was sick. I will say that. I know that he was sick. Um, so I think some things got a little bit delayed. He was um, also delayed getting, you know, international competitors kept telling me that he, he was late getting the rules out this season for all of the choreography for the 80s in general because there were a lot of questions and I'm just saying that Sean was late you know with that too and, and he's a busy man he's a very busy man but you know diplomatic a answer going on. Look at you Brooke okay <laughs> were you at the rink the day that Diana and Gleb got monitored by Sean Redstad I was on the ice with them yes and he was like dripping in Russian designer like <clears throat> he was a walking he devil. is always like dressed to the nines he comes into montclair state arena in a full suit like oh no, i was talking about gleb not sean oh gleb oh yeah always <laughs> yeah. sean is dressed to the nines but like yes always. This, yeah no, they all kind of are yeah but that's such a thing though like that's their style yes of course but like, that was that was a fun day for everyone that was it was it was scary to skate on that ice mm. Were Especially because you... everybody was doing their new programs. And obviously none of us had any idea of where they were going. You know, like, you know, we skate with Team Israel. So we all know each other's programs. So we kind of know when to go here and when to go there. So we don't run into each other. Um, and if for some reason we do, we do. You know, things are going to happen sometimes and we're good with each other. But, um, like, it was just stand at the boards and hope and pray that they're not going to go the way you're going. <laughs> Yeah. It's just, as I said, these are like two different camps and you know, never near the two shall meet. It's preferable that way. Yeah. yeah. No, we've been good all summer. Everything's been great with us. Like so. by Jenko. He's fun. Yeah. <laughs> He's got blonde. He hair. always does the moves. He I saw him dance too. I, listen, I saw him coaching ice dance one day. Oh, I missed And that. I told Igor he was gonna be out of a job. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll like sing by Jenko. <laughs> is doing ice dance yes so he's not an ice dancer so it's great yeah all right brooke so are you doing double run-throughs this week like are you you're picking up the stamina like how are you doing this hopefully i mean the bronchitis didn't help um yeah, I'm, yeah. Oof. yeah i just finished the antibiotics like two days ago so we're good we're back and i was doing Never run happened. i was yeah. doing run-throughs all last week i took one day off from run-throughs like once it was confirmed that it was bronchitis I went in the next day, just did sections. And then the day after that, it was like, okay, it's time to do run throughs. Um, but obviously keeping my health in line and in check, making sure that I'm not going to pass out on the ice or anything like that. Um, it's been getting, it's so much better. I'm fine. I'm confident in it this week. There'll probably be a few double run throughs. Um, and then otherwise it's just doing it. And how do we watch it? Do we know? Um, usually there is a live stream 
last year there was a live stream the year before that there was a live through the stream. website or it's like on youtube it'll probably be through youtube last year it was through okay. youtube okay um share yeah. the live stream link for everyone so that we can participate. absolutely yeah usually, usually with nationals i like to keep everybody updated i'll do like a little nationals vlog keep updating stuff on my stories with times and everything so and your mom doesn't travel with you to competitions because she was too intense is that correct my yeah yes and no um when i was like 12 me and my mom had a mutual agreement that she didn't like to watch me and i didn't like to watch her because we would get too nervous um so she has not seen me skate live since i was like 12 years old and she does not like to travel like she's a stressed flyer and everything like that so because my grandfather just likes to travel if there's a competition he wants to go to he comes with me <laughs> Right. And everybody knows my grandfather. <laughs> well, well, don't drink his glass of water because you never yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. he's fun. Well, I, he talks to everybody. So. Well, we look forward to watching you. We wish you the best of luck. And everyone's going to be watching this, Brooke. So give us a show. I, I will always give a show. <laughs> Thanks so much, bro. Bye, guys. <laughs> All right, Jonathan. Well, there's a bunch of things to catch up on this week. The season is really about to start, and it feels more exciting than uh, the previous season. It's it's really growing, and I think uh, there are a lot of moving parts. Uh, we just watched uh, Elena Kostrnaya and uh, her husband, uh, Georgi Konitsa, who skated uh, to Vivaldi's Four Seasons at a show, and based on that performance- It's a version, a Max Richter version, just for the clarification. Yep, okay. I've been invited to the Russian test skates, and it is maybe the closest thing you're gonna get to classical music this season. So <laughs> I am just you know, giving credit where credit is due. And there are pair uh, skaters that have different opinions on this. You know, pair girls are very opinionated. I have to say, I am, blown away by the improvement in Eliana Kostranaya because when we first saw her perform, she looked very uncomfortable doing the throws, even if they were double and it was very small. She has um, found her inner pair girl fire. Like even after the split twist, you just see her turn with authority and confidence that is is sort of been, been absent in a while. I would imagine the idea, if you have spent your life as a as a woman who skates pairs, to think that now people can willy nilly just like just add water and create a pairs team that's competitive could seem insulting. However, it seems to me, based on every clip we have seen of them, the commitment is real. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not sort of an afterthought. They seem to be taking it very seriously. The death spiral is beautiful. A lot of the choreography is interesting. And where we saw, like, for instance, some new pairs at the Junior Grand Prix this year, um, or this weekend, rather, where the lists look a little clunky and things like that, they seem to have mastered a lot of the elements. It's sort of the individualistic movements and transitions that on their own, they're doing very well, but they have not yet seemed to meld as a pair in their synchronization on those things, it seems. She does seem based on her skating rhythm that she would be one of the more difficult skaters to match. It's just, it's because she's so naturally talented and the way that she moves on the ice, she has a little bit of a, I wouldn't call it like quite standard, like crossovers in the way that she does them, but they are fantastic and obviously work for her very well. It's slightly different than the way he skates. And I think melding that is gonna continue to take time. Yeah. She's also, stronger at skating than he is yeah All, that, yeah uh, you know this has changed over the last six months right and and now she is surpassed um right. to where he needs to now keep up and maybe improve a bit um my take on this is that they were invited to the test gates I, I do see a coaching change in their future. It just seems like they are with what would be lovingly referred to as a village coach um, in Russia. And if they are going to move ahead, I would expect them to go to one of the major trainers, one of the major training centers. I, you know, he has been with Moskvina in the past. They chose not to do that. I, <laughs> some of the options, Terry with her new rink, Nina Mosier, 
Um, and now Kostradaya is starting to be a choreographer for Angels of Plushenka because they need to make money for training because they're not technically on the national team yet. So a lot of moving parts there and things that could happen. Plushenka does want to get into pairs. So I think that that would be probably a natural fit. And if they want to give us the drama with Yana managing them uh, over again, I think a very different situation this time. There's also, uh, you know, Trusova, who is not competing, but she may do shows. She has done shows for uh, Plushenka, you know, quite often. So they are trying to build, you know, within um, Russia. I would be curious if uh, Kostrnaya does switch training centers. I think it's probably time that they need a little bit more um, of an expert coach and more of... Um, a political backing if they want to move forward mm. and probably access to better doctors Jonathan because who are we kidding right this is what doctor is at which rank let's we saw um, Dr. Shevetsky with Moscovina over the summer we know he has um, definitely had um, contact with Team Tuberidza in the past uh, this is definitely um, a factor uh, in uh, Russian figure skating. And, and I think we won't know exactly uh, what will happen, but you know they've made a big improvement in a short amount of time. So uh, curious, you know. Facial expressions, yeah. <laughs> Thoughts have crossed my mind, you know. Yeah, yeah. And this is the same week, you know, people are, oh, why are you being so mean about the Russians? I don't know if you've been following, but Alina Gorbachova, uh, the Russian junior national champion, ran away from her training center with her coach, uh, where she, whom she lives with, uh, last week. Or, and everyone is saying, no, it's it's totally fine. This is normal. It had nothing to do with skating, nothing to do with the coach. She only took her passport, um, about 30,000 rubles. Uh, you know, her computer... Um, slept in a stairwell, but it had nothing to do with training or her coach, apparently, according to the video, that perhaps looked like a hostage video that she was like- that, Yes, I felt the same, yes. But, you know, as usual in Russian figure skating. Well. Yeah, no, nothing to see here. Yeah. Nothing to see here, and now we are blaming um, the her. six year old girl, yes. Because she made everyone worried, okay? This, it was Aim not- on her. I mean, it's absolutely backwards, all of that, yeah. You know what? It's exactly what you would expect from Russia at this point, right? I mean, like, literally, if you think about, like, what a sane person would say about this situation. Cry for help. Let's let's make sure she's okay. Instead of that coin upside down, head. you enter the twilight zone. That is how the Russian media will cover this. And- fascinating right yeah. so I, I i feel for this skater uh as far as what her future portends i would be very concerned you know she doesn't have a relationship really with either parent uh according to the news articles they uh didn't the coach didn't allow her to have communication uh with her mother her mother also gave her away to the coach when she was nine years old the father doesn't live with uh even in the city he lives in Krasnodar, which is uh not uh, very close to Moscow. Uh, the mother was on the other side of the city. So, you know, this is really a skater who was very much alone and d seemed to have no one to turn to. So I think that there's a lot of um, red flags. I just don't understand in what world that isolation is the only way that someone thinks that they can train a skater. It yeah. makes no it, sense to me. The thing is, is that like on one hand, there was like a missing person search for her, right? But it had the vibes of when Nadia Komenich and Teodora Ungrianu ran away from their training center and the Securitate in Romania found them to yank them back into training. <laughs> okay, so this is what it felt like. And we have heard in Russia before about Polina Shelepin running into the forest. Alina Sagitova has talked about running away in the past. You know, these are not idle statements. It's It's not regular right for this some... isn't just a hormonal teen who's struggling with structure and just lashes out this is this is very clearly something much deeper i mean they've talked about the coach and restricted diets and and trying the triple axle and quads and it not going well according to other people but um just the way it's being covered i think it's really um concerning and i think it's really dangerous and really upsetting, but, you know, it's lining up with this Camila Valieva trial. And I think it really 
um, just cements where there's one type of abuse, why there are other types of abuse. And, and it does seem as this trial goes forward that Camila Valieva may very well be the scapegoat and the sacrificial lamb in this situation. I think most people with eyes would tell you that her days at the top of this sport have likely come and gone. And there are other people uh, who may be better and she's still a propaganda piece. So who knows how they will push her to be uh, near the top. But I think last season, obviously it would have been fantastic, you know, for her, for Russia, if she won again, she was what third, right? And, and I think that that would be uh, lucky uh, for this season. And, and what we've seen from other skaters in the past, it's not to shame her, her technique was not built to last. So I, I would be um, really concerned and I would pay attention to what the Russians start saying about how she got uh, the drug or, or what happened. There's a lot of whispers going on about what that strategy will be. Um, I'm gonna do an As the Blade Turns tomorrow. And, and there's a lot of interesting connections between uh, who her lawyer is um, for WADA. Um, and the fact that she did a show with Victor Petrenko last summer, he had the same lawyer once upon a time. It's There's a lot of things that go on uh, in the background in this situation. And it's really fascinating and, and deals with a lot of geopolitical issues, but I would be uh, paying close attention. I think uh, I did talk to Christine Brennan. She's hoping to go uh, there, which I think we need, right? This needs to be oh. like, Okay. Not to be in the courtroom, because I don't know if that's possible, but to be around and there. I mean, come on. We need Christine live on location to really be... Um, and it's in Moscow where they're holding it? No, no. It's going to be in Switzerland. And of oh course, my God. I was like, Christine, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, and U.S. figure skating is trying to get a seat there. They, they wrote that letter right. uh, to CAS. Look, I, I think that they certainly deserve uh, a place there um and it's interesting that japan and canada haven't but i have you have yes, to i'm very confused especially by japan's silence on this issue. not confused yeah or i am i i don't even want to say surprise then it would be hard for me if i were the japanese federation to just sit quiet which they're doing and it's a hundred percent a strategic move it just they are so involved in the outcome of this yeah, and I think Japan actually has a lot of power in terms of the funding of skating. I, I don't know why each federation hasn't done it, but if I had to surmise, I would imagine that there's a lot of people that are still concerned about what happens when Russia re-enters international figure skating and if there will be repercussions uh, for them being kept out and how this situation is handled. So- A fleet of connected judges that are still judging, representing other other countries that are still very much affiliated with that federation, yeah. You know, I look at uh, Russia almost like Bethany Frankel and in the words of uh, the reality show heroine, if you wanna take a shot at this beat, you better not miss. So mm -hmm. US figure skating has to make sure that they win uh, this case because if they don't, and I, I have to say in all honesty, the more I think about it, I don't see a future for figure skating moving forward if Valieva is not given a punishment that is satisfying um, to the parties involved because it will really call so much into question. It will put such a stain on the Olympics further. And this is already Olympics where you have two, uh, you have the three top skaters coming into the Olympics all from one country. You have one who says that she had powdered and liquid food at the Olympics. You have another who had an outburst on television that was, I think, traumatic for everyone who watched that uh, it appeared to be a- A break, know, yeah. A break, a trauma response, right? And then you have, um, you know, someone else that was, uh, caught doping, walked through the mix zone with a hood over her face. I mean, just just depressing and really um, concerning, you know, and really, really, really um, problematic. And if this doesn't go the right way, I, I don't know how much the sport can have good favor in other countries besides Russia, right? How does the sport move forward if the Japanese don't, 
you know, upgrade their metal or in the US or in Canada, even if this should go the other way. And that's why I think it is disappointing that the other federations haven't joined because they do have a stake in this. Right. Um, but it seems like a chess move that um, they are not currently doing that. So it's a little bit of a bad taste that they haven't. And, and who knows what's going on behind the scenes with the right. kind of pressure that's being exerted. Um, because U.S. figure skating waited a very long time until 500 days before, to, you know, 500 days after to start really applying pressure. And it was something that really lost a lot of steam during the war. So, uh, you know, people forget different things that happened in this case, because as soon as the war started, people thought that the way forward was to just ignore Russia. And I have to say that I vehemently disagree with that. I disagree yeah. with the time. I think that you have to pay attention to Russia because the whole situation is not over and it's not permanent and you need to pay attention to the politics and machinations that are going on uh, there. So that's my take on the situation because when they are back, right, or whatever um, happens. So, and there hasn't been a full investigation into Russian doping or, or any of those uh, issues, certainly not by Rusada, uh, as far as we know. So I would be really um, curious to see what happens. Yeah. And coming up, right? What is the date of that? Uh, the 26th to the 29th of September. So it's going to be here before we know it. And, and I think it will really, um, you know, garner a lot of uh, attention. I think. So is this the kind of thing where they anticipate sort of a verdict afterwards, or will they then take a vast amount of time to contemplate? You know, in the past, it has taken some time, and sometimes they release all the decisions at once. I don't think that we'll have uh, an answer on the 29th. What I think is interesting to remember, and this goes into, um, you know, who's responsible and not. Russia is currently saying Valieva is young, she's not responsible. But uh, she was 15, but 16-year-old Gorbachova who ran away. She exactly. The difference a year must make in their mind, I guess. Yeah. Right. But Andrea Radikon, 2000 Olympics, uh, the winner of the all-around after the vault was the wrong height. Other people would disagree, including Svetlana Horkina, that the whole competition was... I, I, I mean, I personally agree that the competition should have been stopped and restarted and there's just no right. way of doing this and that they should have put it at the end of the game or found some way that they could rest and, you know, be at their best and psychologically trust that the equipment is the right thing. But in that mess of an Olympic Games, uh, Andrea Radikon was the winner at the end of the competition. And it's interesting because she took a Sudafed. And at that point in time, uh, CIS said tough. You took a banned substance. She took a cold pill. She was not taking banned heart medication that could right. give sort of stamina. And they were not lenient with her to this day. Uh, she's still fighting, trying to get that gold medal back. She did break the rules. Uh, it was given to her by a doctor. And she was, you know, not an adult in the minds of many people. You know, there is precedent here that it's not on Valieva's side. Radikon was not suspended, though she did lose uh, the gold medal for it. She was back competing, you know, at the World Championships the next year and things really moved along. So I would be interested to see what happens um, with Valieva. I think the team gold medal. I don't think that there's a roadmap to Russia being back into the Olympics if this goes the other way. I think that what would happen for the IOC is because of the war, the Russians will say this is all politics, but because of the way things are lining up with what's happened in Ukraine, I can't see Russia coming back in if they were to keep the gold medal and Valieva not have a substantial punishment. I can't see the public having an appetite for that. And nor do I think that they should. Frankly, I think that if uh, CIS and the IOC and Thomas Bach goes that way, I think it could be really, really damaging to the Olympics and any credibility uh, that the Olympics tries to have. So, yeah. Agreed? Yeah. I, I just, I, I can't see it. Um, and I think this whole thing has gone on for far too long. And this is, I mean, anytime something is posted, people go, oh, does the U did the US get their medals yet? And you're like, where have you been? Oh, no, yeah, no, no one has. Right. This is why she's having the trial, right? right. I mean, believe me, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't understand, but yeah. <laughs> um, in other news, I, there were both the U.S. had champs camp and Canada had high performance camp. 
uh, from the U.S. Interesting is that Amber Glenn is the flavor of the hour in terms of U.S. figure skating. Obviously, she trains in Colorado. People saying that the triple axel is looking great. Uh, she's more focused than ever on training. And she is really who U.S. figure skating is hedging a lot of their bets on. I think a lot of the momentum um, that Isabeau had really, um, I think, with what happened at Four Continents lot did not help her. Uh, and people are looking towards Amber Glenn to kind of be the leader. It'll be interesting to see if she can handle that kind of pressure. I mean, we have an ice bath that we could give her. You know, I'm sure they have one at the OTC. <laughs> I think, Amber, it's time to get in the ice bath every morning. It will change your life. You got to do it. Um, yeah, uh, interesting. I to like, I don't want to I don't want to sound rude or dismissive because I think she's very talented and interesting, but I am sort of surprised to hear that. I mean, surprised, but, you know, they get behind different people and, and they yeah. all repeat. Um, you, you start to hear like group think when they start repeating bullet points. All of a sudden, Ava Ziegler, who last year didn't skate great at nationals, but she had a great international season. Now, all of a sudden, you know, she's got that old school skating look. She's athletic. They're behind her. Um, and there there has been some controversy with Ava Ziegler, but I, I'm not going to. I will have to defend U.S. figure skating here. And what happened is that um, Ava beat Claire Seo, uh at Cranberry and then at Champs Camp when they had a skate off for the Skate America spot. What wound up happening is Claire Seo lost to Ava by a substantial number of points, but got Skate America anyway. And this, it's not quite what it seems, depending on who you talk to, because though Skate America is important, they knew that Ava's number in terms of her ranking was coming up, right? So that when people withdraw, she was able to get NHK. Mm. So they were then able to say, okay, we can get Ava on the Grand Prix and get Claire on the Grand Prix. Now, theoretically, because she got NHK, they could have given Ava two spots, but they wanted mm. more, more skaters. The opportunity, yeah. Okay. Um, Ava is getting another senior B and she does have a bye to nationals. So not all is bad there. She will have, you know, international experiences. I do think it's a status thing in, in the eyes of judges and certainly experience to have two Grand Prix as opposed to one. But, right. you know, I, I don't think it's as, it doesn't look great, but it's it's not as slimy as it has been characterized. But I think it's it's an interesting case. Uh, Chelsea Liu and Balaj Nagy also got Skate America. Chelsea did have to go to the ER at Champs Camp. Something uh, happened on the ice, but that was not everything because at the high performance camp in Canada, uh, everyone is of course very into this pair rivalry that's developing between Leah and Trent and Deanna and Max. And it's interesting because from a qualitative perspective, Deanna and Max are like light years ahead. Uh, and Leah and Trent are consistent um, and they did a relatively clean-ish run through for August, but people will say if your if your program is clean in August, it may not have enough difficult transitions, right? Mm. Because okay. that, that may not be the most challenging program out there in terms of uh, transitions. And I did hear one detail that was so like, oh God, I had to confirm. Max's who had a Sergey Grinkoff 87 European situation happen where the strap under his skate came undone, the whistle was blown, they had to stop their performance, and then later had to stop the performance again because there was something on the ice. So it was not a um, yeah, competitive yeah. outing that anyone was hoping for, but otherwise people reports were that DNN Max looked very strong. So, and they will be competing at the Autumn Classic in a couple of weeks, so we'll see them there. Roman Sadovsky was not um, at the camp because of injury and he's supposed to be getting back on the ice soon. Uh, we also, um, it, it seems like the best skater in the men's was Wesley Chu, uh, hmm. who's coached by Keegan that Murphy. Was yeah. He did a quad lots that was apparently rather beautiful. Gogolev, more of the same. Conrad Orzel looking better. Ravi continues to crack the whip there and trying to improve the training and the skating skills and the ballet and all of that. What so, about dance? Dance looked phenomenal. 
Okay. I had a feeling it might. Yeah. I didn't know if Piper and Paul were going to be there. I mean, or... Marie France is saving this 80s discipline, right? And really, the Cana Danes, of course, she is just a dream, you know, yeah. of course. And he is great, but not as strong and a little stiff. And, um, but, they are beloved and Piper and Paul are looking strong yet again. So I think, and Marjorie and Zach, I heard uh, look good. That's as well. who I'd be curious to see what their free dance material based from the Rio. And then they tried something more, was it white crow or something of that ilk? Uh, I didn't yeah. like it for them. I didn't think it was a match, but yeah. I mean, I know, was it, was it wasn't Rocky. Right. I didn't think it was them, but you know, and and this white, I think we're going to get sick of the Nerea of Right Crow music. I mean, um, it's what Isabeau is using um, this season for one of her programs, of course, right? So there's that. Lindsay at Champs Camp. I heard Lindsay did well. Yeah, because now I'm so excited by the Sander infusion that I hope that <clears throat> she can sort of regain this sort of buzz and momentum as well. I heard she did well. It looks like the main buzz is behind Amber, yeah. but that the, the ladies looked stronger. And I really think this season, Justin Dillon has a lot of pressure on him to really pull U.S. figure skating out of the gutter because last season, listen, they relied on Jason Brown heavily. They relied on paying Alexa and Brandon to uh, compete one more season. Uh, you know, Chalk and Bates. I think that there's a lot of um, pressure. I don't have a full dance report uh, from Champs Camp yet. Uh, okay. But I would be curious in the U.S. too. I think that that's a really um, fluid, um, moving dynamic uh, coming up. And... We will see. Apparently, Ilya Malin looked great. I think Audrey Shin spending a lot of time with Ilya Malin's parents, although Tammy is still listed as her coach. I mean, I don't think we want to anger Tammy, so I think we keep her. Got it. But if, if someone's training in Virginia, but they have Tammy as their coach, I think, in my opinion, I suspect what that's about politically, but we don't have any proof of that. Got so, it. Tammy seems easygoing, right? She's <laughs> great. Full of personality. Very chill, doesn't need a lot of students, doesn't need that, yeah. Doesn't have a need, you know, to <laughs> dominate. Yeah. Push other coaches out of the way, <laughs> you know. For remember instance. she was going to coach with Tom Z in a team? Yeah. And remember then Vincent was going to have 1,800 people in the kitchen cry with him. <laughs> and like, then she was oh. going to work with Victor Pfeiffer. Yeah, these are all, I'm just noticing with Tammy that... Yeah. Anyone who has a modicum of talent. Um, where, where that common denominator lies, yeah. You know, but it, it you know, is what it is. I have to say on the Junior Grand Prix, Gia Shin was delightful this week. Oh. I feel like she's improving her extension. I don't think that she is a finished product yet, but I think the work that David Wilson is doing with her She's like the right there. She's like tapping on the door because she will like in a moment hold this position and it's super extended and super lovely. And then the next one, she doesn't like really finish the illusion spin or, you know, like something like that. So I, you see it sort of coming together. It's just not fully solidified yet at the moment. And as a junior, understandable, but it seems like the material also, although be it still a little generic, is still very pleasing to see. But she's got time and she's in a good spot. If you think two seasons from now, she could be near the top of her game and keep uh, yeah. those things going. I, I mean, you know. It was a little disappointing to see Josephine Lee, who kind of had a moment at Nationals, um, and then just sort of see that it's not quite happening for her so far and, on the Grand Prix here. And there's also a concerning situation going on with Soho Lee, uh, who switched coaches. Her mom had posted something about pushing her too hard on Instagram, which was a little worrying, but then she was back and she competed over the weekend at one of the NQS competitions because she you know, needed to do a showing before she goes to the Junior Grand Prix. And I think we're, they're in a situation where do they send someone who completely was unprepared and then further bombed the performance doing waltz jumps and all singles. Right. And then they were supposed to go in about a week and a half to go to their first competition. I have to say, I don't, I don't think that that's emotionally or mentally 
healthy. It, for someone, if they are injured and performing that poorly, I, and it's not, it's not a mean thing, right? I don't think it is good to send someone out for a big outing, one of the biggest competitions, right, of their lives, when they just did two waltz jumps at a competition and what kind of pressure and what kind of panic and anxiety and, and feelings of imposter syndrome and whatnot could happen. I just think that that's very damaging. And, and I think that the appropriate thing to do would be to pull her, but that's not a slight against her. I think she needs more time to get healthy and get prepared and, and figure and out. And have what... a positive experience. I mean, yeah. often looking back at when they sort of shoved Gracie into that Ross Telecom cup, when she knew she knew what was going to happen, I think it did so much more damage. Yeah, and it's not good for her or the audience. And I know that there's such, oh my God, pro clutching if you were to pull someone's assignment. But remember when Caroline Zhang went to that Skate America when she yes, was- that was the other example I was gonna bring there, up. There, right? I was there in person and it was one of the most upsetting things I'd ever seen. And how do you think for the person that's who's on the ice, are they disassociated? What's happening? Yeah. I mean, a skate like that is devastating and can really yeah. have repercussions. And, yeah. and I think the appropriate thing to do, and I've heard, you know, that there are people that have differing opinions on whether or not uh, she should compete, but I, I just, I don't think it's appropriate in this yeah. situation. I mean, I think that's why you have monitoring. And I think if someone- right. What's the point of the monitoring? Yes. If you do nothing with the information, yeah. And she still has enough time to hopefully get ready. I mean, I know it's not easy with these NQS competitions and there's all this stuff about buys and all of these things, but if someone is really not ready and they're only going to a competition to get a buy and they're allowed to go and do single jumps, there's something wrong with the buy system. And perhaps they should yes, just- Yes, agreed. Up. I mean, even that's what Gracie was saying at the time is she knew it was going to be rough in Russia and the, they were telling her, don't worry about it, just do doubles. What are we doing if you know that has to be the situation? What is that about? That's horrible. And it ruins someone's reputation. People start saying yeah. things about you. Yeah. Uh, come on. You know, this is someone who had, an, you know, perhaps an injury and, you know, give them the time that they need to be at their best. I'm not confident. Yeah. I mean, I think a high performance director there's high performance uh, that they are supposed to direct, right? And I don't think, I don't think that this should be about a loophole for to get to nationals. I just don't agree with that rule, and I don't apologize for that opinion. Yes, yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, just, I'm with you. I'm with you. Give them the time. You know what? If you were going to give her a buy because she got on an airplane to go to an international competition, I would still give them the buy if they're that good of a skater. Exactly. Yeah. You want that person at nationals? Let them go to nationals. Yeah. If you have an injury? Well, you know, things happen, you know, and this is just a weird rule situation. But, and perhaps there's someone more deserving who could use that opportunity while this person- Maximize the opportunity. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I don't think it sets them up well. And what does it do to their future career, right? Like, you know, you have this horrible experience that now you have to overcome and it's a- that, that you didn't have to have. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't yeah. like it. I yeah. really don't like it. So other than that, Rika Kihira is pulling out of her competition. It seems like she's still uh, dealing with injuries. Sonia Hilmer did great at her NQS over the weekend. Did her triple toe, triple toe. So she seems like she's moving in the right direction and putting more good performances together. And that's great to see. So yeah. yeah. Triple toe, triple toe. Speaking of which. Yes. Watched your interview with Debbie. Oh, Okay, what do you what do you want to ask? What do you want to know? So, okay, I don't know if we're supposed to say this, but I remember when I first started following TSL, there was a Debbie interview that felt very different than this. Mm -hmm. And I know that she's had ups and downs. Um, it's why I did it. Yeah, and I have to say, it, there was something, there was something very nice to see about sort of the place she seems to be now as opposed to where she was in the past. Um, and it was, it was just fascinating to take that deep dive because we hear so much analysis on the free skating. We hear, you know, and now we're dissecting like all these programs and all of this sort of stuff. And even when we go back and rejudge, you know, we're not looking at the figures as much. 
So to hear the inside bit, especially about Debbie's take on her first figure, Ivanova's figure, like all these sorts of things, it suddenly engaged my interest in figures far more than actually any ABC fluff piece did. Um, although I loved that you had edited it, edited in the way they were trying to present it in an explainable way in Calgary, which I found very interesting. Um, I wanted it to be a love letter to figures and I, I wanted to showcase that Shepard and Debbie are two very bright, creative people. Yeah. Um, who maybe aren't understood by everyone. And yet I, I, the more I learn about figures, the more I learn about figure skating, the more I think that the ISU made a bad decision. Well, and it was interesting when you included all of the footage of the current skaters disagreeing with the choice. Now that could just be because it's a sport that we know doesn't do change so great. So just the fact that it was going to be a change, maybe they felt that way, but Scott really just, just let the ISU have it in that in his sort of comments um, where he was like, oh, well, they just want to have cocktail parties. They don't even know about skating. Otherwise, they would never have even dreamed of cutting figures um, from competition. But it's you had said, I think, was it Carlo Fossi that sort of was like, get ready, because it, in some time, here's what you're about to see by cutting this. And everything everyone was concerned about now in 2023, looking back, was 100% right. It just took a while because we still had several Olympic cycles where everyone had grown up with them. Yeah. It really wasn't until more recent history where no one's had anything to do with them. And it was fascinating to hear Shepard in particular be like, or maybe it was Debbie, I can't remember who, they were like, at some point, the people that know figures will all be gone. Yeah. And even though a sport may remain, it's that knowledge, that basis of what the whole sport ever was will just have it gone extinct. Yeah, and obviously there are always exceptions to the rule like a Patrick Chan, although if Patrick Chan did figures, maybe some of those jumps would have been even more secure. Yeah. I, I, when I'm watching skaters lately, I look at their foot and where the balance is over their blade in addition to their glide to figure out where their balance is. And I look at like Yuri's feed and Paul Wiley's feed. And then you go back and you watch that Dorothy Hamill PAA zoo or watch Michelle Kwan's just glide, just her glide, not the choreography, not the, she grew up with figures. She claims she wasn't good at figures, but she trained them through novice, right? There has been so much lost in the art of skating and everything that we talk about now with the skating skills. What's missing, yeah. The deportment, the posture, the Jojo Starbuck, show off your pearl necklace and let everyone see it. All of that was figures. Right. All of that, that skating is missing because of this clutter and these requirements and the spins that all look the same and this footwork on flat edges by a Terry's students and all of it. I, I, I think it was a terrible decision. Yeah. Listen, well, there person, was corruption in figures. There's corruption now. Didn't solve a thing. Okay? Right. Well, and I know that they were trying to replace it with this moves in the field situation or whatever it is. But it's interesting when you talk to certain coaches, They, you even see the coaches that have grown up with figures and their frustration at a, a young skater's inability to do a bracket or even just like know how to do something that for them should be just so innate. I yeah. haven't heard from anyone who did figures and was ultimately successful in skating that thinks it was the right decision to get rid of them. When even Janet Lynn is, they were saying, is like comes and is a part of these things. And it, as we were sort of like taught on that Magic Memories on Ice, it's like she should hate figures more than anyone, but she doesn't. <laughs> And I think, that, yeah, and if you go talk to people about how good or bad were her figures, I think the important thing is Janet Lynn was maybe the best free skater of all time. And spent 70% of her time training figures. And she was against the best figure skater of all time. Right. Now, in the weighting of everything and what should have been worth, I think that's a whole other discussion. Um, but yeah, and I, I think the argument, oh, you could just train them and it'll be fine. That, 
did not happen. No one did that. Um, And I think that we've seen with the quality of the sport and the lots edges and what, I mean, so I have a video and and I'm going to post it and it's Paul teaching um, how to do a lots edge, right? Hmm. And that made me think of Paulina Edmonds. We know that she loves a lots from an outside edge. You know, she doesn't talk about the flip edge very often, but she loves an outside edge lots, right? Yeah. And at his seminar, Paul goes and he takes you on the figure on the back outside circle, right? Mm-hmm. And you do the lots from there. And it's just yeah so much clearer yeah oh of course that's where it Which should was be. not how i was taught it right and you're like wow like yeah that is what that is right and that's how you get that evie scott gold lutz it's just from the figure and you think like what has been lost with yeah it? and and I think that they, the ISU continues to make really bad decisions for who knows why. And, you know, and then there's so much talk that people today are complaining about jump values. And, you know, Ari Zakarian will tell you, you know, his opinion about, you know, that they're, you know, they don't want quints and, and those sorts of things. And that there are some people that really think that the jumps are what's going to get people. But, you know, I've been doing live shows and stuff, and we were watching 1997 last night, and, and we're, we've been, on TSL Live, we've been revisiting the 1998 Olympics. We revisited 1994, and after the short program, we decided to go back and just watch the year prior with Tara, Michelle, Lulu, Nicole, and they had a freedom of their skating and an artistry and personality that all came through that was so wildly different than anything yeah. today. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what country they're from. And so individual. Each one of those four has such a distinct personality, a distinct look that's truly their own. Yeah. And you see what's missed, just in terms of how the sport was covered and also how the sport was discussed and that their free skates were these art pieces. Yeah. Right? Giselle, Dream of Desdemona. Taj Mahal, take yeah. five when the drums carry the melody. There was a sophistication right. that has been lost in figure skating. And I think that they try to make it maybe more accessible, but it's lost the overall appeal. when you Because just- there's no connection. There's no communication. And we were seeing this quite a bit. I mean, I understand it at the Junior Grand Prix, but no one making eye contact with a crowd. No yeah. one opening to an audience. And yes, it is a sport. I understand you are probably usually practicing without your music alone with walls all around your ring, but it is a performative sport. And if there is no performance in it, I don't, you've left, you've left the viewers out of it. And as they would all say in those commentaries, um, the judges are members of the audience. Also, I don't believe it would be scoffed at when someone does that. Agreed. Yeah. Just agreed. Yeah. That's where we're at. Um, I, yeah, I mean, night and day in terms yeah. of what we were seeing. Uh, and just on like a, like a campy side note of frivolity, I thought it was interesting to see them competing in the Calgary Olympics in figure th- and what they choose to wear. Because it's also like, what are you doing? Are you dressing? Are you wearing like an athletic warm up thing? I thought Debbie looked like a million bucks. I you would know like, how into the sweater game I would get if I competed in compulsory figures. Exactly right. Exactly right. And she I nailed would, hers. She nailed. I was hers. so neurotic about it too. By the okay. way, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I. I mean, it was it was amazing to see all that footage. I had seen that sort of general fluff piece many years ago, but then to hear her talking about it and then sort of see it in real time. Uh, just a class act, yeah. In that event, yeah. And Shepard is fascinating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but very wow. impassioned about it, and I think even I don't skate figures. I even when I was like very casually skating, that wasn't a part of the equation. But to see someone so passionate about it is um, convincing. There, I, I find it true and and honest. His passion for this, and it's really sincere in everything he says. Yeah, hundred percent. I like that you could ask Shepard anything and he will have an opinion. Yeah, ready to go. Yeah. Ready to go. <laughs> and I texted him the other day. I was like, Shepard, 
<laughs> was writing on the name and remembers out. the years and remembers all of that stuff. Yeah. Where's it? Paul Wiley versus that's Mark it. Mitchell, 92. What do you think about it? He had a paragraph ready to go. Right. Yeah. Detailed analysis. Yeah. It was, yeah. That tracks with someone who might like figures. Yes. Yeah. But I like to. I liked your question like about how I could see it also being meditative. Mm -hmm. I could see it being um, a very interesting, soothing exercise, especially as like a hobby skater, an adult skater or a casual skater. Now, that kind of work, I think, could be very interesting. Yeah. yeah. And probably prone to less injury, I would think, obviously. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It is interesting to see like old school skaters that are coaching when they like are standing around and start doing figures for fun. Mm. They develop a love for it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Very well, on the basis of so much for so long. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very intriguing. So, um, when I was down in Maryland, I have to say, I did think of you because, you know, the Paul Wiley Edge class is like you would want the Paul Wiley Edge class to be in a sense like, there's a moment where we were like skating, doing edges. And I thought, is Paul playing on Golden Pond on his slide up? Like, of course, of course he was. Okay, like this was, this I was saw. happening. Yeah. yeah. Just, just as one does, you okay. know. <laughs> like, he's like one of us, like he's playing all the great skating music. You know, yeah. like, playing the Jeremy Abbott 2012 um, muse. Yes, like as your, as one does, you know. Right, like you do. But even in his like warm ups where he just casually, go the minute he takes just the first glide, you see the difference between that and so much of skating that's happening currently in the competitive circuit. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. remarkable. And even in, you don't know, some of these great skaters will inherently have that gift in how to share the skills. And, and some really don't, that's not their calling. But even when he was doing the interview with you and the way he was talking about things gave the indication to me that he would be a very excellent teacher or coach, however you want oh, to work. He's great. He yeah. is not over being a chubby kid from Dallas, Texas with a leg wrap on his double loop. Let me tell you, he brings it up. He demonstrates what it looked like. He okay. is not okay. over that. Okay. okay, he's still making amends. Okay. But he did, I was ashamed that I didn't have my phone out because we actually saw him do a loop jump, which we would never see him do in competition. That's what he said. He's like, it was the worst. Okay. It was interesting, yeah. He's very detail oriented in a way and very like, Moosh head and yeah, all of it. So, but well, that that tracks with his skating, which was so intentional, you know. Oh yes, yeah, oh yeah. So, um, but it, yeah, a it, it very detailed uh, approach and and had me doing like the Gus Lucy spin entrance, which of course I had seen before, but no one does it right. So, but then I was doing it, and it was. There was a reason. I mean, as long as you didn't delay your axle entrance. <laughs> I didn't do my axle. I was down there because there was only, you know, so much time and everyone was fighting for those lessons. I was originally going to work with him for an hour and then someone else asked if they could get a lot. And I was like, yeah, sure, you could do that. Yeah. So it was okay. I mean, I did the lesson with him on five hours of sleep. So it was. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we were, listen, I was with my friend Glenn Cora and. It's funny, afterwards, we realized that we actually knew each other 20 years ago with my friend Claire, and we were at Christmas parties together and this whole thing, but funny story, but um, she was talking about music and, and she um, she is in charge of really procuring the music and the copyright information for the Navy uh, band. So she has a real okay. musical background. She's a big Jonathan Byer fan. Oh, big fan. Oh, we love her. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> you know, okay. and you know, she was at the Muncie rink with, um, you know, when Peter Burroughs was there and Elaine Zayak and Kyoko yeah. Ina. And she took from this woman, Inessa. And Inessa coaches the Browns, but she's one of those people that um, is like an unsung Hero, she was Dubova's technician when Dubova had the top oh. three games. So okay. she was doing the grunt work for Grisha and Plata, Usova and Julin and Klamova and Panamarenko. And then now, you know, coaches the Browns who do have very good basic skills. Right. And she did like everyone's moves in the field. And like people mm. just talk about her like in one name, Inessa. Yes. Okay, okay. It's, 
It's not a negative thing. They will say that she was very intense, but very encouraging and very particular. But it seems like there's a reverence for like Inessa, but like how they talk about her. So texted Inessa, we're going to work on my moves in the field together and film that. So oh, great. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, trying to do more of um, videos with the different legends and really trying to showcase the finer nuances of the sport, many of which have been lost because of these rules that people don't have time for. And also to showcase their love of skating and their personalities, which I think to see Paul teaching, you understand exactly who he is. And exactly- yeah. And that passion comes through in the teaching just as it did in the skate. Yeah. yeah. So I am planning a series of these to showcase different things and who I want to learn from. That's the other um, aspect uh, there. We so, give Trixie a call. Would love it. I don't know Trixie personally. You know, I mean, Shepard Clark apparently does. I mean, he was gossiping with Tyler Cranston and just, you know, as one does, right? Right, like you do. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, um, you know, there was, uh, you know, of course he took from Slav Kahoot. So, of course he knows Dick Button. Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I also saw Christine Brennan over the weekend. So that was interesting because, of course, she's down uh, in the Maryland, uh, D.C. And may or may not be buying a ticket to Switzerland soon, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need her to go, right? Like, if, if you think about her, to go, her, who is going to re remind us that this is happening? I mean, obviously, it's it's on our yeah. radar, but even within the skating community, it's fallen to the wayside it, for some people. And I think it needs a resurgence in the public. I know they went on Good Morning America or whatever and did that thing, but I think the public doesn't realize it has not been resolved, many of them. Oh, I think, listen, I think we need Aksana Bayul to have a YouTube channel where she just talks about the news every day. Jonathan, I'm gonna give her your number. She will send you every article. You will know everything going on about this, okay? <laughs> I did talk. like the clip you chose of Aksana before the short in 94, where she's just taking her sweet ass time at that barrier, yeah. Yeah. She is so funny, but like, she's a real character. Like she's an interesting uh, person when she starts yes. putting stuff down. And um, she was just talking about, I had a conversation with her about, there's a term in Russia where they talk about different skaters and what level of competitor they are, where they're considered like an A plus skater, Hmm. It's like, it's that thing when we talk about like how good Medvedeva or Katarina Vit are at competition in terms of like delivering their maximum of what they're capable of based on practice versus that. And it was like a very interesting discussion to think about like, because I always think of myself as someone that has to work really hard to feel confident. Hmm. So I'm not an A plus, right? Like I'm not that how Tara can preparation that soothes you and gives you that yes. yeah. and that's just my yeah. personality you know yeah. other people are like better in comp like a Nicole Bobek or you know right. someone winging it Chris Bowman yeah 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 and, and nailing it that could wow. never be me that's just not how I'm wired right mm -hmm. so, I think you have to know who you are and what you're dealing with and then how you prepare appropriately so yeah it was an interesting conversation life life. yeah but one thing I do want to talk about coming up, so I'm going to go and watch Debbie do the figures. I feel like we have, I have to see this in person. Yeah, I'm and, here. Here. and now we're invested. Yeah. I'm invested, right? Now, I, I mean, I love Lake Placid, who doesn't, right? And then the next weekend is the Dick Button Festival in Boston and IDI with Alyssa Sisney. Um, Ice Theater of New York is going to be there. I think next Ice Age is going, probably American Ice Theater. So all the really artsy skaters. And we need to see Queen Alyssa Sisney in all of her glory doing. I, yeah, I saw her win in Greensboro back in the day. It was it was pretty magical. We need to see her skate to circles. You, okay. need, you, you, if you haven't seen it in person, you need to do it. Like okay. neater in this ombre dress. Like it'll it'll really put you back to the era of like Dorothy and Jojo, and you'll just feel like everything is soothed with skating and that- it will be okay, yeah. Very watchable, very lovely. Re recommend it, so. Okay. Highly recommend, okay. I know, it's the second weekend um, in October, and I think it'll be a great thing, and we can go and, 
you know, talk to people with Hermes scarves who have the correct opinions, right? Oh, yeah. Terrific. Yes. Terrific. To wash them. <laughs> yes. So I think lots happening, lots coming. I think it's going to be a really interesting month as we head into this season. So I'm looking forward to it. So yeah. Okay. Thanks, everybody. All right.